that will be um, joining us, but we'll get this part going so we can stay on time. I'd like to welcome you to major types of insurance that businesses should have. We have Michael Ng today with us. He um, has presented for us before and um, be ready to take notes. He's got lots of great information that he's going to share with you today. Uh, I just want to talk about SCORE real quick. Uh, SCORE does uh, training uh, for folks, which uh, you are here for the for today. Uh, we also have, if you haven't been on the website, uh, take a look. There's a ton of fantastic information on the website, especially in the library section. You're going to find templates that you can download. Uh, you're going to find presentations and other short little um, works uh, that you can look through to to help educate yourself uh, with your business questions. Uh, the most important thing that SCORE does is free and confidential mentoring. Our mentors are volunteers and they want to help folks. They want to help those that are thinking about starting a business, that are in the process of starting that business, and those that have already started and they're in, in the growth phase. <clears throat> so we're the, they're there to help you. Uh, the wonderful thing about SCORE is that it is an international or excuse me international national organization so we can tap into that database of um of mentors if for some reason we can't assist you at the local level but i'm, I'm gonna guessing that we you know we can absolutely do that at the local level without any issue we have quite a, a variety of mentors in our in our district uh, so if you're wondering how to get a mentor, you can go to one of the websites listed here and I'll put those in uh, chat so that you uh, have those at your access, or you can just text, you know, put a note into chat and just ask for somebody and I'll have somebody in your chapter reach out to you to get you scheduled. Uh, if you've had a mentor in the past and it's been a while, reach out again, um, ask those questions, the, the next steps, things you're looking at, um, you know, bounce new ideas off of them. Uh, they're there to help you throughout the throughout your uh, small business journey. If you want a question asked to the presenter, please use the Q and A tab so we don't lose track of any of those questions. Uh, chat can house any other things you would want to put into uh, or ask about that are that are in general. But if you would like something asked to our presenter, put it in that Q and A tab so we don't lose track of that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and I'm going to turn it over to you, Michael. It's all yours. Awesome. Thank you, Teresa. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you, SCORE of Boston, for uh, having me today. Um, I'm Mike Ng, and I am the uh, Northeast Territory Manager here at Guarantee Rate Insurance. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I've been in the um, insurance industry for about nine years now. I uh, grew up in New York City. Uh, my family and I moved to New England uh, in 2013. Uh, I currently live in New Hampshire with my wife and two kids, uh, Dylan and Aubrey. Um, so that's just a little bit about, about my personal uh, life. So I don't want to take up too much time from everyone, as I'm sure you all would rather it outside in this uh, beautiful Friday afternoon. So uh, let's get right to it. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, what a typical small business would need for insurance and some of the major types of property and casualty insurance. Um, and when I say property and casualty, also known as PNC, I'm really talking about your, your property, your liability, coverage, uh, your workers' comp, uh, not the life and health. As I understand some people may think um, when that's the first thing that comes to their mind when, when they hear the word insurance. So uh, let's uh, begin. I'm going to start uh, by asking some uh, poll questions just to uh, give us a little bit of a better idea who our audience are today. I'm actually not seeing your, um, if you're sharing screen, we're not seeing it. Okay. Uh, Teresa, did you have the, uh, the poll question that I had sent? Um, I did not. I apologize. I uh, okay. did not add those this time, but I will do that okay. if you want to get started and we can maybe do it in the middle. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Okay, we are seeing the share now. Thank you. 
Awesome. So we will just hold up to uh, the poll question later on. Um, so let's begin. Um, so there are seven different types of business insurance I think a small business should carry. A general liability insurance, property insurance, workers' comp, your commercial auto, your umbrella, cyber, and professional liability. I also want to mention too that sometimes you may see that a small business has a business owner's policy, also referred as a BOP, B-O-P. Uh, this policy covers both property and liability all in one policy. Um, it's often a great choice for small businesses because it's usually less expensive um, than to purchase a, a separate policies. Uh, and it often includes uh, some added coverages, some added endorsements, uh, sort of your, your all, of, all the bells and whistles. However, uh, do keep in mind that the limits uh, for uh, a, a BOP may not be as high as your separate uh, package policies, as package policies are tailored to uh, the client's own ind individual risk. So let's talk about your general liability. Uh, GL typically, typically covers the client for claims um, involving in bodily injury uh, and property damages uh, resulting from the client's products, services, or operations. This is sometimes referred to your slip and fall coverage. Now, oftentimes I hear people uh, get confused between the difference between a general liability and a professional liability. There are huge differences. So, um, but I will get into that later on in this presentation. Um, note that if you are doing any of these things, I will recommend that you uh, speak to either your insurance agent or a broker to get yourself a general liability policy. Um, if you are interacting with your clients face-to-face, -face, whether you are visiting your client's workplace or the client is visiting yours, there is always a possibility that someone can uh, get hurt causing bodily injury. Having access to uh, your customer's property. Um, if your client's property is damaged at your lo location that you're responsible of, uh, the GL policy can cover the cost to repair or to replace. Um, using advertising, advertisement to market your company. If you're promoting your company and accidentally use the wrong wording that is um, on the copyright or trademark, a GL, a GL policy uh, can cover uh, your legal fees. Um, and also too, that this would cover any defamation claims against you uh, that's filed against you or your employees. So for example, if a local restaurant goes, a restaurant owner goes around and says, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A puts uh, toxic chemicals uh, in their chicken, uh, Chick-fil-A of course has the right to file a defamation claim against you. Um, this is when the GL policy could come in uh, and protect the business by covering the legal fees, the court costs, and any settlements and judgments, uh, regardless of fault. Um, next, if you are using a third-party location uh, to operate your business, if you are renting an, a space, I'm sure the landlord is chasing you down for those certificates uh, for proving that you have a general liability policy. Uh, and that is to cover if someone is to get injured on a job site, um, where you are responsible of, uh, this would respond uh, by covering their medical costs. Um, the last one um, is for a lot of our contractors. Uh, in order for you uh, to, uh, when you propose or bid for certain contracts or jobs, you would at least need to 
to show a general liability policy for you to uh, get rewarded for, for that contract. Do any of these apply to solo consultants as well? Uh, yes, I can get to that later on. It depends if whether or not if they're, um, yes, I would say so, because they do, they can cause a, um, a slip and fall or negligence on the job site that they're in. Uh, accidentally causing a property da uh, property damage uh, to the client's home. Um, so yes, to that question, a general liability uh, could cover those incidents. Thank you. And I do have the poll ready whenever you want to do that. Okay. Awesome. Let's get right to it. I'm sorry, Teresa, you, do you have the, uh, the poll pull up? Oh, there it goes, a little bit of delay. So the first question is, uh, how many years have you been in the business? Zero to one, two to four years, five or more years, five years or more. Um, if you haven't started your business yet, but uh, it's looking to do so, uh, please feel free to choose uh, zero to one. Uh, the second question is, which industry is your business in? Retail, technology, restaurant, uh, or hospitality, uh, real estate, uh, architect and engineering, health and beauty, uh, construction, financial services, automotive, or others? Teresa, are we getting uh, any of these uh, response back? Yes, we are here. Uh, let me go ahead and end it and share the results so you can see it. <clears throat> so yeah, we have uh, six out of 10 or 60% are in that beginning phase. And we have okay. another four out of 10. Um, they've been in there for a little bit. So we got some technology people, real estate, architect and engineering, health and beauty, and some okay. others. <laughs> yeah so yeah great awesome thank you so much for uh, sharing that with me yeah and this would um give us a better sense of again who our audience are today and uh how this presentation can relate to your business um next we have commercial property um commercial property um it not only covers your building, but it also covers your business uh, personal properties, such as your computers, uh, furnitures, um, desks, tables, uh, chairs, um, signs, um, fence, landscaping, some important documents uh, that you need in order to operate your business, uh, inventory, and other people's property. Um, Keep in mind, especially here in Northeast, that earthquakes and floods are typically not covered unless if you decide to buy a separate policy uh, for those perils. Some of the factors that come into play when rating a property insurance policy uh, is what we abbreviate as COPE. You have construction, uh, basically the material of the building, O for occupancy, uh, that what is the building used for? What kind of tenants are in there? Uh, for example, if a rate um, with a restaurant tenant is probably going to be rated higher uh, than, a, than an office tenant because of the risk. The protection, whether if you have a fire sprinkler alarm system or a burglar alarm, you can get credit for those. Uh, and the exposure, uh, where is the building located, how far it is from the coast, and how far it is you 
know, from a fire station, whether or not if there's a hydrant nearby, um, and et cetera. Next, I want to uh, spend a little bit of time to talk about some of the important property endorsements that I suggest uh, all of you to think about purchasing when looking into uh, property policies. Um, first, we have business income. Um, oftentimes, when I ask um, at the very beginning uh, of uh, our meeting uh, between my client and myself, is that I ask them, do they have a backup plan if their business is forced to shut down? Um, how are you going to make rent? How are you going to make payroll? Uh, business income can protect you if a fire or another cover peril uh, damages the property that your business is located and that you're forced to shut down obviously you can suffer a significant uh, amount of uh, income. Uh, next, extra expense. This sort of kind of goes uh, hand in hand with business income. This is any additional uh, cost that you incur during the time uh, when your business is shut down. But if you need to um, rent additional equipment or be relocated to a temporary location, um, in order for your uh, in order for your business to continue to operate, uh, the sewer backup endorsement covers the cost of repairing or replace your building or your business personal property that's damaged by sewer water. Next, you have your uh, utility interruption that will protect you if your business is shut down due to uh, due to electricity, gas, water, or communication services. Uh, then we have spoilage. Uh, that a lot of my our restaurant folks, um, I don't think we have restaurant, any restaurant folks here, but you see that um, a lot in a lot of restaurant policies is that there's spoilage to cover the food that's stored in the refrigerator and the freezers. Um, I will, I uh, mentioned this too, is that when, when um, reviewing your policy uh, based on these type of coverage, make sure that you understand um, how your damage is calculated in the event of a claim, whether if the insurance carriers are paying you at a inventory cost or at a retail. Um, Next, equipment breakdown that covers any machinery like your steamers, boilers, ovens, your, your fridge. Then we have your um, the software coverage, the electronic data processing. This is any software that you use in order um, for your business to operate uh, for. And then you have your employee theft. This covers any uh, employee stealing from their employers. I once uh, I had a, a restaurant owner who owns about 15 locations here in the, the Northeast. Um, one of his GMs uh, stole $27,000 from him cash. It took him nine months to find out. Um, luckily enough, when we reviewed his policy, he had a $25,000 limit on his policy. So he was able to recover uh, most of his damages. So things like this do happen, unfortunately. And before we get into workers' comp, um, Teresa, do you have the poll question for the workers' comp? I, I do not. Can we have them reply in chat? Yeah, sure. Uh, just want to get a sense of how many employees do you have, including yourself? Uh, since we don't know poll, I guess we can. Yeah, if you would chat. put it into chat, how many employees that you currently have to give us an idea of where everyone stands. Got one, one. Okay. 
So I'm going to guess zero to one. Most okay. of the people today. So workers comp, um, all employers operating in Massachusetts are required to carry workers comp for their employees, with the exception that you're a sole proprietor or if you are an officer or uh, executive uh, of the company, or uh, you hire household workers, uh, domestic employees who work less than um, 16 hours per week. Or finally, you have your independent contractors um, are not required to have workers comp as long as these three elements are met. First one is you need to prove that they do not work under your direct control or supervision. Uh, you need to establish that they perform work that is outside the normal course of your, of your business. Um, and finally, you need to document that they have their own independent business or trade doing this kind of work. Those are the um, three exceptions that you, uh, that in the state of Massachusetts, you, do, you would not have to carry a workers' comp policy. Um, According to uh, Mass State, maximum weekly benefit is 60% of the gross average weekly wage for temporary total incapacity benefits and maximum of 75% for partial benefits. Um, the workers, uh, the compensation, the benefits would not kick into the sixth day of disability. Um, which means that you will not be paid for the first five days unless uh, the injured worker cannot work for 21 uh, calendar days or more. And any employers who are found not in compliance would be found would be fined $100 per day by the state. Some of the factors that go into a uh, workers' comp policy, uh, an underwriter would look into how much uh, gross annual payroll you have, uh, where is your business located, the number of employees, the, uh, the industry or the risk factor. So for example, a, uh, a receptionist um, is probably gonna be rated a lot lower than a, a, a contractor who, who exceeds you know, three stories high. Um, the limits that you're asking for in the policy and the claims history uh, for the business. And to continue, uh, workers comp uh, covers your medical costs, your lost wages uh, due to work-related injuries and death benefits. In many states, uh, most workers comp policies would include your employer liability insurance which protects the employer in case that the family member of an injured worker files a lawsuit for negligence against um, the employer. And this policy would cover the, the attorney fees, the court costs, and the uh, settlements uh, or judgments. Now, um, does a worker's comp policy cover anyone who contracted COVID-19? It really depends, uh, even at this point. Generally speaking, um, in the state of uh, the state of Massachusetts and, and New Hampshire, it typically would not be covered. It's a case by case basis. Um, I have seen um, first responders and healthcare workers being covered, um, but um, traditionally your workers' comp policy would exclude any computer, uh, community spread illness, illnesses like viruses, just as what COVID-19 is, um, because you can't prove that it, you got COVID um, from the workplace. However, uh, some states have extended um, this coverage 
um, recently a, a court in California had uh, ruled a have allowed the lawsuit to proceed when an employee working at Seize Candies um, who was infected by Corona uh, virus, who then went home and gave it to her husband. Fortunately, her husband later died from the virus. So um, some legal experts are saying that they are expecting some states and courts may follow this ruling, but uh, we shall see. And then moving forward, we have your commercial auto. And I understand um, oftentimes um, for, small, for small businesses, the line between what is considered a personal vehicle and a commercial auto it could be confusing. Uh, sometimes a small business owner or an employees may use their own uh, personal vehicles for business purposes. For example, you may um, use your own car to travel um, from job site to job sites or transport some, some equipment um, or even deliver some goods. But keep in mind that almost every uh, personal auto policy has an exclusion that would exclude um, any liability if it's used for business use. So that means you're not going to be covered um, if you get into an accident while driving for work, with the exception uh, of your commute. Um, so let's talk about who, who needs commercial auto. Uh, you should get a commercial auto policy if your vehicle is owned, rent, or leased by your business. Uh, if the auto is uh, operated by your employees, or if the vehicle is not owned by the business, however, it is used to conduct business uh, purposes, such as transporting goods and equipment, as we talked about, uh, driving your clients or employees around, uh, performing a service that you're paid for, um, charging passengers a fee to ride in your vehicle, like your Uber, your Lyft, um, charging people a fee to transport your goods. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, charging people to a fee to transport their goods in your vehicle. Hauling heavy work-related loads and uh, towing or towing a trailer used for business purposes. And commercial auto, uh, what goes into uh, rating a commercial auto policy? Uh, what type of uh, industry you're in, uh, the type of vehicles you have, uh, the number of vehicles uh, your business owns. Um, believe it or not, if a business that is that owns more than five vehicles or more uh, may be cheaper uh, individually uh, per vehicle uh, compared to a, um, a business that does not have uh, that have five, uh, four vehicles or less. Um, we, the carriers would consider that as a fleet and normally they will give you, they are a little bit more flexible when it comes to uh, rating um, your auto policy. Uh, how often are the vehicles driven? Um, what do your employees driving records look like? Uh, the type of coverage you're choosing the limits you want, and of course, again, the claim history for your business. Uh, another important uh, endorsement that I urge everyone to consider, um, you can add this under either your auto policy if you have one, your commercial auto policy if you have one, or under your business owner's policy, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, this is uh, the hired or non-owned uh, coverage and hired and non-owned provides uh, a liability coverage when you're driving either your own personal vehicles or you're leasing a vehicle um, and you're renting it for uh, work purposes.
and then we have an umbrella policy um, with how high the legal fees and the settlements could be nowadays. Um, I always recommend um, all my clients to, to consider getting an umbrella policy. Unfortunately, um, in today's world, a uh, million dollars is it's not enough. Um, and an umbrella policy could provide you an extra layer of any of your liability policies um, by going by going beyond um, those type of policies, such as your general liability, your auto, your workers' comp. Um, typically, your umbrella uh, is a, a, are the limits are in increments of million. Uh, so for a million dollar coverage, you could be looking at as little as a few hundred dollars uh, per year, uh, depending on what type of industry you're in. Um, keep in mind, you cannot just get an umbrella policy, a standalone policy. It works in conjunction with you having another liability policy, such as a general liability, a worker's comp, or an auto. A um, like all any other uh, liability policy, your umbrella covers um, the the medical expense, uh, your attorney fees, and other damages uh, that your company could face uh, in a lawsuit. And then you have the cyber insurance policy. Uh, I think we have a couple of folks here who are in the um, in the tech world. Uh, so you, this is obviously Im imperative uh, for you. Um, typically, an, an insurance, uh, a cyber insurance provides first and third party. It also generally covers your business liability uh, in case of a data breach um, that's involving in your client's sensitive information, uh, such as your uh, their social security card, their credit card, bank accounts, travel license, or even uh, medical records. Um, and besides uh, this policy covering the legal fees and the expense, uh, your cyber policy can also cover um, incidents like notifying your customers um, by, of the data breach, uh, restoring um, personal identities, recovering some compromised data and could, um, and repairing damaged computer systems. Um, and oftentimes if you are either accepting uh, credit cards or checks in form of payments, um, or as I mentioned, have possession of your client's personal data information, you should get a cyber policy. And then finally, we have the professional liability, um, sometimes called as your ENO, your errors and omissions. This covers any uh, small business against the cost uh, of the client's lawsuit over unsatisfactory work. How does this, how is this different than your general liability? Well, your GL policy covers any bodily injury, your, uh, the customer's property damage or uh, advertising injuries. On the other hand, your professional liability covers any of uh, the legal defense uh, when a client um, or customer suffers a financial loss due to your professional service or advice. Um, some of the common professions that we see that need uh, a professional liability are your accountants, your engineers, insurance brokers like myself, lawyers, architects, your consultants, um, your, your doctors, uh, your, your real estate uh, agents. Um, those folks would need a, a professional liability in order to, to practice. And some of the factors that go into rating a, a professional liability policy are um, the, the industry you're in, the limits you're asking for, uh, the business size, how many employees you have, 
uh, your day-to-day -day operation, and finally, again, uh, your claim history. And I think we are done here. Um, I think it is time for uh, some uh, questions. Yeah, I, I don't have any posted, but if anyone would like to throw one in chat real quick, we'll give you a few minutes. Um, we just had that one that we had earlier. So if you, anyone has questions, please um, take a few moments to enter that information. And I do want to apologize for not having those polls ready for you. Um, it's not the fault of our presenter today. That was definitely my oversight. Uh, I don't want you to reflect on, on him. So. You're, you're allowed once per uh, <laughs> workshop. <laughs> Three oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give it a few more seconds in case we get some slower typers. Um, no questions, but thank you for educating us. I will see that. Thank, thank you, you, Cheryl. <laughs> okay. Well, um, well, we have your contact information there on the screen if anyone wants to email him directly. Um, and I guess we're going to say that there are no questions at this time, which means that you did a good job covering that material. Um, so uh, I want to say get out and enjoy this beautiful day and um, have a great weekend, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. I hope uh, you all find it helpful. Um, please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.